Right now at noon, UW-Madison is apologizing for a video the homecoming committee put together that did not include any students of color. And the impeachment inquiry into President Trump moves forward. An update on the members of the president's inner circle who are being called to testify. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 on this stormy Tuesday afternoon. Let's start with concerns about flash flooding as heavy rain moves in over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Dana Fulton has a look at your first alert forecast. A lot of rain out there. A lot of rain, some heavier showers too, and a lot of lightning early this morning with the line coming in. Even now we do have those thunderstorms bringing uh, quite a light show for us. The heavier showers have kind of been on a line stretching from Lone Rock towards Madison. You can see right now we have heavy showers in the eastern edge of Dane County, a lot of lightning in parts of uh, Iowa and Lafayette counties and then heavy rain stretching up into Sheboygan and these showers uh, the bulk of them starting to fall apart a little bit but we still have the chance for rain through the rest of the afternoon and evening again from Prairie du Chien through Lone Rock and into the northern portion of Dane County that's where we've seen some isolated areas already pick up over two inches of rain most of the area though has been close to about a quarter to a half of an inch of rain and we're going to continue to see showers so those totals will continue to climb a flash flood watch is in effect for the rest of the day due to the concern of course uh, for some heavier showers bringing localized flash flooding it goes through this evening and into Wednesday morning with more showers expected for early on Wednesday but we'll take a close so look at that future track and the rain that's coming up uh, for the middle of the week in just a few minutes, Mark. All right, Daniel, see you then. Thank mm -hmm. you. Topping our news today, the UW-Madison Homecoming Committee is apologizing and has removed a promotional video that only partially represented the student body. The video called Home is Where We Are invited various student groups to participate, but clips that made it into the final production did not include any students from underrepresented populations. The university released a statement in response apologizing for the pain the video caused. The statement says, quote, we know that both historically and today, students of color and other unrepresented groups do not feel as welcome on our campus as majority students. As a community, we must commit to and invest in ways to change this. Part of the interstate in Rock County is back open after a crash that took four hours for crews to clean up. All lanes were just reopened a half hour ago at the intersection of I-3990 and I-43 and Wisconsin 81. The crash caused backups and drivers had to take detours during the rush hour traffic. We don't have any word on injuries at this time. New and noon, Madison police say there was a targeted attack on the east side this morning. A car and a home were hit by bullets around 7 a.m. on Milwaukee Street near East Madison Baptist Church. No one was hurt. Witnesses reported hearing more than a dozen gunshots. Police believe they found the van involved in the incident unoccupied more than 10 miles away near Todd Drive. The former Dallas police officer who fatally shot her unarmed neighbor in his own apartment has been found guilty of murder. Amber Geiger said she mistook his apartment as her own and killed 26-year-old Botham Jean. Prosecutors argued that she was distracted that night texting with her married police partner with whom she was having a sexual relationship with. She had missed multiple signs in the hallway indicating she was on the wrong floor. The jury deliberated the case for less than 24 hours. Geiger now faces up to life in prison. Congress may be in recess, but the House's impeachment inquiry continues to gain steam. Nicole Killian is at the White House with the latest developments. The impeachment inquiry into President Trump's dealings with Ukraine is moving full speed ahead. A trio of congressional committees issued a subpoena Monday to the president's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, and gave him two weeks to hand over records of his communications with Ukrainian officials. I was not involved in any election, anything. Other members of the president's inner circle are also being pulled into the probe. CBS News has confirmed that Secretary of State Mike Pompeo listened in on Mr. Trump's July 25th phone call with the president of Ukraine. The conversation is at the center of the whistleblower complaint that triggered the impeachment investigation. I made a call. The call was perfect. Uh, when the whistleblower reported it, he made it sound terrible. President Trump is demanding to know more about the whistleblower, tweeting this morning, why aren't we entitled to interview and learn everything about the whistleblower? Well, we're trying to find out about a whistleblower when you have a whistleblower that reports things that were incorrect. The president insists he did nothing improper and says congressional Democrats are harassing him.
If the House does vote to impeach the president, the matter would be referred to the Senate. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says the next step may not be up to him. It's a Senate rule related to impeachment that would take 67 votes to change, so I would have no choice but to take it up. Uh, how long you're on it? is a whole different matter. Some members of the administration, meanwhile, are still working on the Russia investigation. CBS News has learned that Attorney General William Barr has asked foreign leaders to help the Justice Department's review of its origins. Nicole Killian, CBS News, the White House. And Democratic lawmakers say President Trump is threatening and trying to intimidate the whistleblower. They've called on the acting director of national intelligence to take steps to ensure his or her safety. Governor Tony Evers plans to change the date of that special election for an open congressional seat after the, the U.S. Department of Justice alerted him the dates he set violated federal law. The election is to replace Republican Sean Duffy, who resigned last week. Evers set the special election date for January 27th with a primary on December 30th. Evers' spokeswoman says the state and federal law conflict with each other, and the governor is working to set a new date that will likely be in April or May instead of January. Today, the 53rd annual World Dairy Expo kicks off at the Alliant Energy Center. Thousands of people will be there from dozens of, for dozens of events. Each day from now through Saturday, nearly 100 countries are represented in showing competitions. Event organizers say it's a great way to learn about the latest egg technology advancements, exchange ideas, and meet other people in the dairy industry. Tickets are $12 for people 12 years and up. Among the thousands of visitors, President Trump's Ag Secretary Sonny Perdue is in town for the World Dairy Expo. He's holding a town hall meeting there before making stops in Verona, Fitchburg, and UW-Madison. His visit comes as Wisconsin farmers are facing some tough times. The state has lost more than 550 dairy farms so far this year after losing nearly 640 farms last year. The Milwaukee Brewers have released their 25-man roster for tonight's National League wildcard game against the Washington Nationals. All-star outfielder Lorenzo Cain is on the list despite an ankle injury from Saturday night's game against the Colorado Rockies. Cain missed the regular season finale on Sunday and says his status was up in the air for tonight. Also fighting injuries are Ryan Braun with a strained calf, third baseman Mike Moustakas playing through a sore elbow, and first baseman Eric Thames with a sore hamstring. First pitch just after 7 o'clock tonight. You can watch it on TBS. And there's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Say goodbye to messy frying and hello to a one-pan favorite. Now, this is the kind of weeknight dinner I love. Plus, it's very tasty.
You know, one of my pet peeves about a recipe, no matter how good it is, is when it's cooked in a skillet and it splatters all over the stove. That just makes me nuts. That's because the last thing I want to do after a long, hard day is scrub my stovetop. At times, there's no option. But if I can avoid the mess by turning a recipe into an easy, splatter-free, one-pan oven favorite, I'm all for it. Here, for example, we begin by melting some butter and pouring it in a baking dish and setting it aside while we combine some flour with salt, pepper, and a little paprika. Next, we dip pieces of cut up roasting chicken into the flour and place it into our butter line pan. Make sure both sides of the chicken get covered with the butter. After baking this, we take it out of the oven, turn it over and baste it with a buttery honey lemon glaze that we made while the chicken was roasting. Then back into the oven it goes. Once it's cooked through and the coating is golden, it's done. See how easy and splatter free this was thanks to our oven? All that's left to do is spoon the pan drippings over our roasted chicken and dig in. To get the recipe for our mouthwatery honey lemon chicken, all you have to do is visit our website. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a buttery lemon way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, thank you. Next to new showers on and off throughout the day and possible heavy rain tonight could cause flash flooding issues. Dana Fulton has the details in your first alert forecast next. Well, if you're in the market for a new job, LinkedIn says now's a good time to search. And a frozen pizza company is offering delivery this month. Diane King Hall has your Money Watch report. Global trade is expected to slow down this year to the lowest levels since the Great Recession. According to the World Trade Organization, the flow of goods between countries is expected to rise just 1.2%. The WTO blamed the sharply chopped forecast on the U.S.-China trade war. 
The number two man at Europe's largest bank has stepped down after being accused of spying. Credit Suisse's chief operating officer, Pierre-Olivier Bouet, admitted to investigators he ordered surveillance on a top banker who left for rival firm UBS. The COO claims it was to protect the interests of the bank. If you are on the job hunt, now is your time because October is the best month for job seekers. According to LinkedIn, this month typically has the most jobs posted. Many hiring managers say they like to bring people on during the month because it's a busy time and they like to get new hires in and train before the end of the year. And it may actually be delivery this time. DiGiorno is straying from its famous catchphrase in honor of National Pizza Month. All of October, the frozen pizza brand will offer delivery in five yet-to-be-announced locations. Pizza fans can tweet their hometown along with hashtag DeliverDiGiorno for a shot at delivery. But keep in mind, these pies will be coming in cold. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King-Hall. And at the noon hour, Dow Industrials are down 287 points. Wow, the Nasdaq down 69, the S&P 500 down 31. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke out of the radio barn today. So here are your farm numbers. Dana's here now with our first alert weather wet out there today. Wet, soggy, a little humid. Temperature-wise, of course, quite a bit cooler today. We're close to 70 right now in Madison, but the showers and thunderstorms just continuing through the rest of the afternoon. Our humidity, of course, at 97%. There's a lot of moisture outside, even when it's not raining. It's still some patchy fog in spots and feels very soupy. Uh, most of the rain along the eastern edge, finally getting a little bit of a break for Grant County, though we do, it looks like, have the possibility for some small hail in parts of Iowa and Sauk County. A light rainfall right now for most of Dane County with some heavier showers starting to push further to the east. We have had some heavier rain come through already today. Uh, some areas stretching from Prairie du Chien and Lone Rock into Madison. Uh, getting picked up closer to about two inches of accumulation. Just hearing thunder here in the studio. Mark was all excited about it. This cold front is what's the driving force for these showers coming through right now just straight through southern Wisconsin. It's actually going to stall just a little bit or move very, very, very slowly today into early tomorrow morning and then finally pull away uh, heading into to Thursday morning, but most of Wisconsin dealing with showers today. Our breeze right now becoming are coming from the north for a lot of the area, but of course south of that cold front, a little more of a southern flow. So areas right along the state line or in northern Illinois, just a little bit of a temperature jump from what we're seeing currently in Madison. They were in the mid 70s, but if you go down towards uh, central northern Illinois in the lower 80s still, these shower chances stay right along the front through the rest of the afternoon and overnight. We are expecting some heavy rainfall and thunderstorms overnight into early Wednesday morning. The good news on Wednesday, we'll get a bit of a break in the rain before one final round of showers comes through. Mostly cloudy still throughout the rest of the day and then Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. The last round of rain will pass on over. Thursday will stay mostly cloudy even behind the showers, but we will steadily dry up 
and that's going to lead to a really nice sunny Friday. There's a slight risk for severe weather today. Our concern, of course, as we've all already experienced the heavier rain at times and some stronger wind gusts certainly possible, uh, though there's a pretty low risk for anything more severe than, than those two options. Showers continue through the afternoon and evening. Heavy rain likely right around midnight into early Thursday or early Wednesday morning. Wednesday commute going to be another wet one, mostly cloudy through the day, and then those shower chances developing yet again Wednesday night into Thursday morning before we finally get to dry up. Accumulation totals on top of what we already have. We're expecting another anywhere from two to three inches for most of southern Wisconsin. The further south you go and the further north, those totals, of course, decrease. But that target line of the heaviest rainfall just running from Prairie du Chien right on up towards Sheboygan. And again, some areas have already picked up anywhere from two to three inches. Because of this, that flash flood watch still in effect for all of southern Wisconsin for tonight into tomorrow morning. Our alert day is still for today and tomorrow due to the chance for some isolated flooding concerns. Showers likely early on Thursday. Temperature wise for Thursday, uh, we are planning on seeing those temperatures <laughs> climb on up. The webcam decided to pop up as well for us right now. Uh, but those shower chances will pop up again for early Thursday morning and then finally wrap on up with the cloud coverage building on through. Ah. Uh the end of Thursday night into Friday. I think it's the lightning. The lightning did it. That's what I'm going to blame it on, too. Not not user error, 100% lightning on that one. You hear the rain on the roof? It's yeah, coming. the rain's coming it's down. Coming and down. even driving into work, uh, I haven't heard it that loud on the truck yeah. in a long time. I, I have probably. two umbrellas in the car if you'd like to run out and get one. Oh, good, me. good. Thank you. All right, I could do that. <laughs> All right, dude, thank you. <laughs> Next at noon, Angie Edge is here from the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin to show us some fall recipes featuring award-winning blue cheeses. Stay with us. Angie Edge from the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin is here with our Cheese of the Month, and we're celebrating fall, which means seasonal produce and 
my favorite blue cheese. Yeah, I'm so glad we brought one of your favorites. So we have some great recipes featuring um, seasonal produce like Brussels sprouts and sweet potatoes, and nothing makes it better than topping it with some award-winning Wisconsin blue cheese. So I know you said blue cheese was one of your favorites. It's one of, yeah, I like all cheese, but so I really love blue cheese. So we're featuring a local blue cheese today. It's a Car Valley blue cheese, and the one that we're using on our re recipe is a Glacier Pentacream blue cheese. Um, Pentacream meaning it has five times the amount of cream as a traditional oh. blue cheese. Cheese. So I know you tried it, Mark, but it really just <laughs> melts, it, melts in your mouth because it's so creamy, earthy, delicious. And it actually recently won this summer at the International Cheese Awards in the United Kingdom, the best United States cheese. So very exciting wow. about that. That's a big and honor. the company not only won the best United States cheese, but swept the blue cheese category, winning gold, silver, and bronze with their blue cheese. So these are just different varieties? So this is a wildflower blue that has a little bit of heat and kick to it, and then a smoked blue cheese as well so different varieties of, of cheeses that we have and the, the, it's actually mold in there it right? is actually mold they use an edible mold a penicillin mold and they actually pierce the cheese at the end of the process um, so that you have the, those mold spores begin to grow within the cheeses then you see the blue or the green mm -hmm. veins begin to form and so, you put them on some sweet yeah, potatoes we here? have a maple butter um, sweet potato that also has a little bit of bourbon so you're gonna slice the sweet potatoes bake it in the oven for about 40 minutes and those flavors just melt beautifully through it top it with with a little blue cheese so you have that earthy and sweet flavor. Uh, very timely with sweet potatoes. And then over here we actually have a warm Brussels sprout slaw. So wow. sliced Brussels sprouts, there's some golden raisins, some spices, salt and pepper, and then again topping it with that blue cheese to get that nice flavor as well. So can't wait for you to try it because I, I know either. it's one of your favorites. And it's the, the best in the world. Yeah, and made uh, right here locally in Sauk City, Sauk County. So, Re recipes yes. online. Recipe online at wisconsincheese.com. Thank, Thank you. you. Can't wait to dig in. Here's Dana with one final check of the forecast. I'm on the wrong side of the studio right now. <laughs> Everything over there looks delicious. Outside it is just a little rainy for us. We do have a flash flood watch still in effect for all of today into Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. A lot of rain, a lot of lightning with these thunderstorms coming through as well. Right now, heavier showers just around Madison and stretching to the east. We're getting a little bit of a break in Grant County, but more rain expected through the evening and into Wednesday morning. Keep the umbrella on hand and, of course, keep an eye on the road as you head out this evening. Absolutely. Turn around. Don't drown. That's our time for now. We'll see you back here at 4. Have a great afternoon.